Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new lecture of our course on heterogeneous systems. Today, we are going to introduce another important parallel pattern, prefix sum or scan. In, the, in this course, we have already introduced some important parallel patterns, such as the reduction operation that reduces a set of values to a single value. And it's an operation that requires associativity, commutativity, and an identity value. We explain how to implement a divergence-free mapping that can maximize the CD utilization and this way the performance. The second parallel pattern was histogram calculation. That is a primitive that is uh, frequently used to reduce the dimensionality and extract notable features uh, and patterns from large data sets. What we basically do here is uh, for each value of uh, input elements, we have a bin, a counter, that we increment every time we find a new element with that value. Uh, because we have concurrent, execu concurrent execution of multiple threads and they might collide when updating the beans in the subhistogram, this requires atomic operations. And one way of alleviating the cost of using atomic operations that typically serialize the execution when there are conflicts, it's histogram privatization. With privatization, what we do is using multiple subhistograms, at least one per thread block that are calculated independently and later reduced in a copy in the global memory. The next parallel pattern was convolution, which is uh, widely used in image processing, video processing, and computer vision, among other fields. And in convolution, we apply a filter or a mask on each element of the input and calculate a weighted sum. Uh, we introduced the 1D convolution that can be used, for example, for audio processing, but we also talk about 2D convolution that is typically using uh, convolutional neural networks these days. Related to that, we also explain in the next lecture how to implement a convolutional layer using matrix multiplication. This requires to unroll the input feature maps and unroll also the convolutional filters, give them the shape of two matrices and then perform a matrix multiplication that is an operation that is typically very well optimized on GPUs using different optimization techniques. For example, the joint register and shared memory tiling that we introduced in the previous lecture. Today, as I said, we are going to talk about prefix sum, also called a scan, and this is an operation that takes an input array and an associative operator, for example, addition, multiplication, maximum or minimum, and returns an output array that is the result of recursively applying the associative operator on the elements of the input array. This is an example input array. Let's um, think about uh, this associative operator, for example, an addition. And we will calculate the output array in two possible ways. One is called exclusive scan. And this is the case where we don't, uh, for each index of the output array, we don't use the corresponding element, corresponding index on the, of the input array. That's why to calculate um, yi, we only go in the recursion until from zero to uh, i minus one. And for an inclusive scan, we are using the corresponding uh, input element in the same index. Uh, a scan has many applications in parallel programming. It's um, a primitive that can convert uh, recurrences from sequential into parallel. And it's a basic building block in many important parallel algorithms, string compaction, partition, select, unique, radix sort, et cetera. We will talk uh, briefly about some of them at the end of this um, lecture. Let's take a look at a couple of examples, one for exclusive and the other one for inclusive scan. Let's uh, consider this or input array. And to calculate the output in an exclusive scan, notice that we init um, initialize the first element of the output array to the identity value. And then we start iterating over the elements and adding the previous uh, output element to the current uh, input element. So this would be the output for an exclusive array. For an inclusive array, we initialize the first element to the first element of the input. And this would be the output in this case. So now let's uh, discuss about how to implement a scan. And in particular, we are going to uh, use inclusive scan as the example in a parallel machine with two or more 
levels of, uh, of uh, parallelism. Uh, in this case, we use a hierarchical scan. So if we are thinking about the GPU, remember, as we know in GPUs, we compute with grids of threads and these threads are, are organized into blocks. So in the GPU, uh, what we would do is partitioning the input array over the different blocks that we are going to use in our program. And then first of all, we will calculate and per block inclusive scan. So as we can see, this intermediate array here contain, contains the scan values or the prefix sums for the original input array. It's kind of a segmented scan because the scan operation is divided into several segments. But now, uh, if we compare this per block inclusive scan with the output of the, the final output of the inclusive scan, one thing we notice is that we cal cal calculate the elements in each of the segments, uh, the final value in each of the segments by using the last element of the previous segment. For example, in order to calculate these 14, we add these four and this 10. And in order to calculate 20, we need to use six, which is the uh, the uh, actual element in the same position and the previous last elements of the previous blocks, in this case, four and 10 to compute these 20. So uh, one thing that we can do is to first take the last element of uh, for, uh, that has been calculated by each block in the per block inclusive scan, put it in a smaller register and then compute the scan of these partial sums. Now uh, we take the, inter the array with the intermediate results of the per block inclusive scan, and we propagate these offsets to each of the blocks that are going to add the corresponding offset to their own elements. And this way, we end up computing the final output array. When we implement these on a GPU, uh, we need to have a global synchronization point after having, calcul having calculated the per block inclusive scan. Why is that? Because we need to uh, have all these four values in this example ready when we start the computation of the um, scan of partial sums. So the way of doing this global synchronization is either by kernel termination and then launching so the computation of the scan of partial sums on the CPU or launch a new scan kernel on the GPU. At the end of this presentation, we will also explain another way using atomic operations in shared memory. After the scan of partial results has been calculated, we can launch a second kernel that uh, performs the addition operation to, uh, to add these offsets to the elements of the corresponding chunks assigned to each block. So uh, how to implement an efficient per block inclusive scan? This is the next uh, thing to, to ask ourselves. We can also apply a hierarchical approach inside a thread block using wars and using threads. There are different algorithms to use uh, here, for example, Cogistone or Brent Kuhn. Today, we are going to focus on Cogistone. In the longer version of this lecture, we also explain Brent Kuhn. Uh, so let's take a look at the Cogistone parallel inclusive scan. If we have an array of eight elements in this case, what we would do is assigning one thread to each of these elements, and then we are going to perform these uh, uh, operations um, uh, iteratively. In the first, uh, in the first um, uh, iteration, each thread takes the previous element of the input array and performs, for example, the addition and stores in the output array. Um, in the next iteration, we increase this stride to two and then to four and so on and so forth. How, how the code look is uh, what we can see in this um, slide. So first of all, we need this index for each thread to access the corresponding element. And because we are doing an inclusive scan, uh, we initialize the output with the own element of the input. After that, we synchronize the threads in each block. And in this uh, for loop, we are going to perform as many iterations as necessary, long n iterations, um, from a stride one to a stride that will be, the, that will be half of the uh, thread block size. And as you see, we, can, we double the stride in every iteration. So first of all, we read uh, the, yeah, in, in the value 
one of the values to add from the um, output array uh, with sync thread in order to make sure that all threads have uh, read the corresponding element. And then we add this element to the current value, the uh, output I element uh, before synchronizing again and going to the next iteration. At the very end uh, of this um, kernel, we could write these uh, at the corresponding output, each thread or the last thread of the thread block will write the corresponding output that contains the reduction result that it's needed, that the, the partial sum that is needed for the second step, the scan of partial sums, we write it to an array of partial sums that has one input per block. Now there are some observations that we can make here in order to make the implementation more efficient. First of all, we observe that um, all these um, elements are reused because in each iteration we read them again, we add them to a new number and then we write. So one thing we can do is buffering these arrays into the shared memory. And this is how the code would look. It's basically exactly the same as the previous code. The main difference is that now we have replacing all this computation, the output array in global memory with this buffer S in shared memory. And this um, um, may, will make the uh, execution faster because we are taking advantage of data reuse and the fastest uh, uh, shared memory. Uh, there is one other observation that we can make is that in this code, we need two sync threads um, in order to not overwrite results, partial results that have not been used yet. So one way of uh, eliminating one of these sync, sync threads is use a technique called double buffering. That basically means that we have two buffers, in this case in shared memory, and we are going to be swapping the input and output buffer in each of the iterations of the, of the loop. So um, instead of uh, synchronizing before writing, we can write directly. Now in the next iteration, buffer two would be the input and buffer one would be the output and so on. And this way we can eliminate one of the sync threads that we had uh, over here. And after each iteration or at the end of each iteration, we swap the input and output buffer as you can see in this part of the code. So now that we know um, how to do the, this um, hierarchical approach, um, we are, or uh, now, now that we know the Cogiston algorithm, let's uh, let's uh, keep discussing how to implement a hierarchical approach inside each uh, thread block. So this would be the uh, let's say the whole picture of the um, hierarchical inclusive scan where we have partitioned the input array over the different blocks. They perform per block inclusive scan. Then we have this scan of partial sums either in the CPU or in a new uh, um, scan kernel, and finally the addition kernel. Now we can apply the same idea uh, to uh, a single thread block where we have multiple warps as we'll see. So the whole chunk that has been assigned to each thread block is going to be partitioned into pieces, each of them assigned to different warps. And now in the first step, each of the warps will perform a per warp inclusive scan. After that, and before doing the scan of partial sums, we again need to synchronize that because now we are working locally inside the same thread block, we can synchronize all these different threads using sync threads. That is faster than terminating a kernel. Uh, so then we could have one single warp uh, of this thread block performing the scan of partial sums. This is something that for sure will be done pretty quickly because uh, it's just a single warp and all threads are going to be involved in an, and, 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 uh, in an efficient um, implementation as we are going to see next. And after doing so, we can synchronize again and finally perform the add operation. Let's take a look at how to do the scan internally inside a warp. Um, first of all, we have a certain warp size in current GPU architectures is uh, 32 threads. Um, that uh, is well known. And we are going to use a lane ID and a warp ID to identify the part of the workload, the part of the input that is going to be processed by each warp and by each thread inside the uh, same warp by each lane. So uh, this is the device uh, warp scan uh, function that uh, for each thread, it gets one input that is the own value, the, the, the input value that we are going to store in this uh, variable X. And then we have again a for loop 
in this case, um, the maximum of this uh, for loop is uh, warp size because we are working uh, internally inside each warp. But again, what we are doing is uh, increasing the stride here called offset from one to the warp size. So and we basically double this uh, stride in every iteration. But now instead of using shared memory, because we are working inside one warp, we can use shuffle operations. Shuffle operations are uh, very um, fast and useful primitives that we have uh, introduced in previous lectures that allow threads inside the same warp to exchange data residing in own registers. So what uh, we basically do here is going to a uh, lower link separated by a certain offset and bring the value of the corresponding X variable that resides in a register and uh, store it in another variable Y that we will later use to perform the addition operation uh, here. And this X will have an updated result uh, in the same way as we have in these uh, intermediate iterations uh, of the Cogestone algorithm. And after that, uh, we return the, uh, the value. So now how to integrate this warp scan into the block scan in this uh, hierarchical approach. Uh, we first of all do the first step per warp inclusive scan using the warp scan device function that we uh, explained in the previous slide. And then uh, after uh, that is done, we store in shared memory the partial reduction results that uh, we have to uh, scan in the next step. In this uh, step C, one warp scans in shared memory, again using warp scan, because uh, we can use exactly the same device function that we use in the first stage. And after synchronizing, each thread can calculate its final value performing this final addition. So um, now that we know how to implement the hierarchical approach, uh, when we first uh, distribute parts of the input array to the different thread blocks, and then inside each of the thread block, we use different warps to first do a per warp, um, per warp uh, scan, and then coordinate with the other warps in the thread block to do the, um, the entire per block inclusive scan, we are going to do some analysis about what's the, um, what's the cost in terms of global memory accesses of this algorithm. This algorithm, by the way, is called scan scan app for the reason that we first do a scan operation, the second stage is a scan operation, and the final step is an add operation. So in the first step, in the first scan, we are reading the entire input array. Uh, let's assume it has n elements being n very large. And we perform the per block inclu inclusive scans. Because uh, there is an interblock synchronization that requires to terminate the kernel, we need to write the output to the global memory. So we would be writing uh, n elements as well, corresponding to the per block prefix sums. In the scan uh, second step, in the scan of partial results, we only need to read the partial reductions of each thread block. So we are reading something much smaller and um, in reading and writing. And in the last stage, we do the add operation where we again need to read the entire input array of, I mean, in this case, the per block prefix sums, the intermediate array with n elements. We perform the addition operation. And finally, we write the output elements, the n uh, output element that corresponds to the final output inclusive scan. So in total, we have or in elements that are read or written, being this n uh, very large. One fastest algorithm or one fastest way of doing the same computation is called reduce scan scan. In this case, because what we actually need for the second step is only the final reduction result, instead of doing a per block scan, what we do is a per block reduction to calculate the last element, what, what would be the last element of the per block scan, which is the, the actual uh, partial reduction. We use them for the scan of partial results, and then we launch a final kernel that performs first the per block scan operation, and then uh, the add operation, adding the offsets to the uh, corresponding uh, per block scan uh, results. 
this RSS, reduced scan use scan version, has the following number of uh, global memory accesses. In the first stage, in the reduced stage, we are reading the entire input array that is n elements, but now we only need to write the per block reduction, which is much smaller. In the second uh, kernel, we read and write only the uh, the, the small size of the per block reductions. And in the final scan step, we uh, read again n elements for the input, perform the uh, partial um, scans, and then write an output of n elements. So in total here, we are writing or reading three n elements. And that's why this reduced scan, scan algorithm usually results in better performance than the scan scan add version when using very large uh, inputs, very large uh, input arrays that can you know, um, keep occupy the whole uh, the whole GPU. Now, the last thing that we are going to cover is how to do the synchronization, this interblock synchronization using atomic operations in global memory. Here, we can use a technique known as adjacent block synchronization that basically uses atomic operations in global memory to coordinate consecutive thread blocks that are working on consecutive chunks of the uh, input array. Uh, for the adjacent block synchronization, we use one auxiliary array of flags that um, is going to be, um, uh, each flag is going to be set when the uh, scan of partial results is uh, ready for the next red block to read it. So uh, basically what we are going to do with this uh, adjacent block synchronization, as we will see, is um, uh, in, and, and um, implicit scan operation by coordinating consecutive thread blocks. So um, in order to do so, we select one thread that is going to be the leader thread, for example, thread of the thread block with ID uh, equal to zero. And this thread is going to check uh, the previous flag and is going to wait there in this uh, while loop until the flag, the previous flag has been set. Uh, to do so, one, one possible way of doing it in order to read in an atomic way from the global memory, from these uh, array of flags in global memory, is to use an atomic add where we are just adding zero. So while this flag is zero, we continue looping here. And at some point, this will change. It will be um, equal to one. And in that case, the scan value, the partial scan value is ready to be read from the global memory. So basically, the thread block that has uh, being assigned this part, this chunk here, and has generated these four, is waiting for this 10 to be ready. That will happen when the flag is set, and then it can perform uh, this addition, adding four plus the result of the previous sum that is 10, that's 14, and we will store in the corresponding place in the array of um, scan values in this uh, array of partial sums. After that, we use a thread, sense, a thread fence in order to just make sure that uh, consistency, memory consistency between these two accesses is maintained, and the thread now can set the own flag for the next thread block, uh, thread block working on this part here uh, to uh, read from global memory, perform the partial addition, and store in the um, array uh, of uh, scan of partial sums. And after that, we will synchronize. So in this uh, the adjacent block synchronization, one thing to, keep, to be kept in mind is that the thread blocks might not be scheduled uh, in accordance to their block ID. So we know that uh, each thread block has a block ID, block ID x dot x, uh, that is zero, one, two, three, until the uh, number, the total number of thread blocks that the grid has minus one. And, but uh, the, there is a certain undeterminism on how the thread blocks are really scheduled onto the GPU cores. So we have no certainty about uh, having thread block zero running before thread block one or thread block one running before thread block two. So to um, solve this issue, what we can do is using a dynamic block ID. So each thread block, instead of using its own actual block ID is going to use a dynamic block ID that can be obtained by simply updating a global 
counter, this decountering global memory, and then uh, this, um, the, the, the resulting value is then shared with uh, all other uh, threads uh, in, the, in the same thread block. So now all threads can operate as if this BID was their actual uh, threat, uh, threat uh, block ID. Um, we can call it uh, virtual block ID, for example. So if we do so, problem is solved. We can use this adjacent block synchronization. And the good thing of this adjacent block, um, adjacent block synchronization is that it allows us to merge the three parts of the hierarchical um, scan operation. And in the end, reducing the total number of global memory accesses to just 2n. So um, as a result, this will be faster than a scan scan app and the original reduce scan scan as well. As we said in the beginning, scan is an um, extremely useful parallel primitive that is used as a building block in many parallel algorithms. Here, there you have a list, a string compaction, partition, select, unique. And we have used some of these in a previous work of us where we implemented uh, highly optimized versions of these and a, a collection of, uh, of algorithms called in-place uh, data sliding algorithms. We can do padding or unpadding, uh, string compaction, select, unique, partitioning, et cetera, in place, meaning that the output is going to reside in the same physical um, memory locations than the input, which of course will save uh, a lot of memory space in the global memory by using um, the scan operation and using the adjacent block synchronization that we explain. And if we do so, uh, we can significantly accelerate the performance in this um, experiment from our paper we compared to uh, the thrust library and we observe around three times a speed up, which was um, certainly uh, pretty uh, impressive. And we can make, uh, by using the adjacent block synchronization, we can make an operation like um, select or string compaction uh, to um, almost achieve the maximum um, throughput that uh, the memory bandwidth can provide. For more details, I refer you to the paper and the code that is also publicly, av publicly available. Okay, this is all for today. You can read more about the prefix summons or scan operation in the book, Programming Massively Parallel Processors. There is also a longer version of this lecture where we, for example, uh, introduce the Brent Kuhn algorithm as well. So I, 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 I leave uh, the, um, um, the, 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 the link to this uh, lecture at the bottom of this slide. And this is all for today. I hope that you found this uh, lecture interesting. Um, the prefix sum is an extremely important parallel primitive. And uh, I hope that you uh, follow up with us in the next lecture. Thank you very much for your attention.